This video is part of the Commercial Building Electrical Design Series. Uh, we're going through the special systems that uh, might be used or you might see in a, a typical commercial building. Up to this point, we've talked about uh, telephone or telephony systems. We've also talked about local area networks and data systems within a building, but there are several other special systems that you might see uh, depending on what type of building you're dealing with. And so uh, in this lecture, we just want to briefly touch on all those different systems and, and some of the some of the nuances of those. So as we started this section, remember we listed off many of the different types of uh, communication systems that you might use in a building. Um, three we've already talked about, the fire alarm, the data, and the telecom. Of these remaining systems, uh, many of these systems typically only require for the electrical designer to provide a pathway for the cables and devices to be installed. Uh, with the rest of the equipment and cabling uh, installed later by someone else. So these types of systems are a cable TV system, your security type system, surveillance, access control. With these systems, we basically, again, only need to provide a box at each device location and a conduit from there back to a central location for either our main control panel or a backboard. Uh, for the community access TV, uh, we need to provide a box for coax connection, again, back to the centralized location where they can make a connection to the CATV provider. And many of these systems are transitioning to Ethernet delivery, so uh, they're looking more more just like another part of the network system and they integrate with it in many cases. Uh, with security systems again we only basically need a box each device location and a central uh, security control panel and then from here we go to like door contacts, motion detectors, glass break, keypad locations uh, and many times this will integrate with the fire alarm system as well. For surveillance, I uh, basically need to provide a box at each device location and again a conduit back to a central recording location. Uh, and this is where we just pick cam camera, places where we want camera locations and make sure they can point in the direction that we want them to, to see what's going on. Same thing for access control. This is usually at the doors, you know, that you want to allow people access. Nowadays, it's more of the card swipe systems. Uh, sometimes you'll see the keypads. But uh, there is, another, again, a main control panel that's associated with this. And many times it is uh, integrated with security and sometimes fire alarm systems as well. So another, way that we have, another one that we haven't talked about yet is the intercom. So uh, this is more often being uh, integrated with the PBX, with the telephony system. And many times it's just done through the handset. You'll do the intercom through the handset. Uh, other systems, sound systems, uh, again, pathways back to an amplifier location and um, run the conduit back to that. And many times integrate with that if you're going to have it as sound masking. And that's usually, uh, it can be again integrated into one single system to do both those things. Schools, you might see clock systems, sometimes in hospitals. Uh, you know, they have to keep up with the time, report the time of certain events happening or are. For school, if it's class times and bells ringing and all that type of thing. So again, we put boxes at the clock locations and it runs back to a master clock uh, location that runs all of that and keeps everything synchronized. Uh, there is a trend in some schools that are using these satellite clocks. So it uh, gets a signal, satellite signal every day and corrects the time on itself. So some schools use those. I've seen them. Nurse call is a pretty uh, interesting system. So see this in hospitals and other medical facilities. It's really just a, uh, a hyped up communication system. We'll put it in the patient room, allows for different levels of communication, but you have the panic buttons that will uh, notify the nurse stations. I mean, times make a light flash outside the door so they'll know what door to go to. In some of the larger buildings, you'll see energy management. Um, so with this, you'll have to uh, speak Pick strategic locations to set boxes for energy consuming type devices, many times that's HVAC, lighting controls, uh, things of that nature. So that'll be integrated with that. 
uh, blue light. You'll see this many times on college campuses or in public areas. Um, this is a, usually it's a pedestal that's strategically placed where if someone doesn't feel safe, they can run up to the pedestal. And sometimes you can just push a button and it's a direct intercom to security, or sometimes it's a handset. You pick it up and it'll automatically call the police. And then finally, rescue assistance. This is in uh, multi-story buildings when you uh, anticipate having handicapped people uh, in the building. Of course, if they're on an upper floor and there's a fire, um, they, they instruct you not to use the, uh, the elevator. So if there's someone that can't utilize stairs, they can go out into the stairwell where these uh, rescue assistant places are located. And it's usually a two-way communication there. They can communicate down to the, the fire department and say, hey, I need help. Help me down the stairs. So this is a, a quick uh, overview of the different communication systems that um, you might see in some of the buildings you're designing when you graduate. So just wanted you to be aware of those.